Let's go. Oh yeah. Instant talk, baby. Oh yeah. Oh. 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 I have never been more anxious in my entire life than today. You see behind me is the Mini Cooper SE. It's a pretty cool full EV hatchback that gets about 160 kilometers of range. Now, that makes sense in a country like France where you're in Paris, you need a small little EV. 160 Ks will take you to the, the Moulin Rouge and back. But here in Australia, I can't get to the bloody shops without running out of range and then worrying, am I going to get home? In fact, I've come to BMW, which is actually the closest EV charger to my home. And I live in like central Melbourne. I've dri driven 20 minutes, the car's on 60% battery. And I, like, I'm worried I won't make it home. And it's going to take hours to charge. The charging network in Australia sucks. I'm going to insert a clip here so you can see what it's been like for me. So Jacob, what's it like uh, trying to charge up a car in Australia? Been on hold for 25 minutes. Been on hold for 25 minutes. I got places to be, man. People got, to see. You got things to do. I got things to do, man. And my nose is huge. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this. The Mini Cooper SE. Some market, oh, actually only the UK calls it the Mini Cooper Electric. Like it's a pretty cool car. I'm gonna take you all around it. We'll show you the exterior, the interior, what it's like to drive. Some people call this a true hot hatch. I will give you my opinion on that. We're also going to launch it using my specialist timing gear. And then I'll end on, should you buy a Mini Cooper SE or a Mini Cooper SE multi-tone roof, as this trim is called. Bit weird. All right, let's get straight into it. Now, before we get into the review, I, I'm actually going to explain why we're filming it like this. No joke, uh, this really is like the closest charger to my home. It's at the BMW headquarters, which is pretty convenient because I get free charging. The annoying thing is that one of the chargers, the mini one, doesn't work. Uh, so we've had to use the BMW. We spent like 25 minutes on the phone. It was absolutely ridiculous. So the car's gonna be framed like this for a while. It just has to be because otherwise I'm not getting home. Now, one of the main reasons you're going to spend 70,000 Australian dollars on a Mini Cooper SE is because of its looks. It is a very good looking car. There is no doubt about that. Very, very stylish. Don't know how I feel about this ombre roof with its blue and blue and black look. It's a bit extra for me, but I can understand why some people would get it. So what do you get as standard? Well, you get full LED lights. They are super duper bright and they look really cool too. Uh, mini badge here, you've got fake hood scoop here because guess what? Underneath here, there is a real engine. Not, let me show you. Ugh. So in most electric cars, you would find storage under here, at least most normal electric cars, but never BMWs it seems because there is no storage space under here. I'm pretty sure you've got your, you know, your motor at the front and whatever, but yeah, what? Uh. 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 You're not gonna fit your suitcase in there, my friends. Ow. Oh, it's actually kind of cool. I like that. Don't electrocute yourself. Can't electrocute myself, bro. Electricity can't electrocute electricity, am I right? What's different about this from any other Mini Cooper? Well, it's the front here. You can see a lot of it is blocked up for aerodynamic purposes. You don't need to cool any engine, so you, you block it up, makes it more aero. Makes sense. And as you can see here, there is the S badge here. This is the SE, so I guess it's got comparable performance to a standard Cooper S. You're just spending like 30 grand more, but who cares, right? No difference. Coming to the rest of the side, you've got these optional tentacle wheels here, they call them, and they do look pretty cool. I like how they're blacked out. They're 17 inches and they're wrapped in Pirelli Cinturatos. Pirelli Cinturatos. Never heard of them in my life, but you probably have. Blacked out mirror caps here. It's pretty uh, bougie. You've also got, ooh, look at that. Door handles. <laughs> but they uh, do have keyless entry and go, of course. This is the Mini Yours trim, which is like top of the range trim. As I said, this is the Mini Cooper SE Mini Yours multi-tone roof. That is literally the name of the trim. And uh, yeah, it's a coupe, by the way. So it does have frameless windows here and it's pretty damn cool. 
I'll admit. Again, I'm sorry about the framing of these shots. Uh, as I said, we were really on the phone for like 25, 30 minutes just to find out that one of the chargers uh, wasn't working. So we have to keep it in this position. It's gonna look a little bit weird, but whatever. It's still, it, it works. Okay, it works. So at the back, we have these really cool Union Jack tail lights. I like them a lot. They look really sick. If you combine them together, it makes the full uh, UK flag. Go the UK. We've also got a roof spoiler here. We've got blacked out badging. I really like this. This is the electric badge. So you know that this is the EV. But otherwise, it's a very good looking car. I don't know though if it's, you know, if you should buy one of these just because of its looks. As I said, this thing is $70,000. You could spend quite a bit less, maybe like seven grand or something, and get yourself a rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3. And then you're getting about two and a half times the range, a bit more practicality and, and reliability is gonna be the same because they're electric cars anyway. So I don't know, it, it, it's a bit of a tough sell, but let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think about the, the looks of this car? It's a very good looking car, but would that pull you over the edge over a Tesla Model 3? I'm unconvinced. Let's talk about the interior. So what's the interior like? Well, it's pretty awesome. And it's one of the reasons that you would actually buy the Mini Cooper SE. And it's because you get a pretty premium, luxury, special interior. So there are things to like, but things not to like. Let's start with the things I like. First of all, soft touch absolutely everywhere. It feels super duper premium in here. Uh, and it feels like a million bucks. Like seriously, on, the, on par of BMW, of course, who own Mini. But uh, yeah, you can see where the inspiration came from. You've got some cool touches here, like some toggle switches down here. Some of them do EV stuff over a standard Mini, as you would expect. This one here is for your regen. And this one here is for changing your sport mode or into green or green plus, where it turns off your air conditioning. And I have been doing that to save range. That's how much range anxiety I've got in this car. Uh, but you've also got some other toggle switches up here, which change the lighting, things like that. And it's just a really sleek, cool layout. I like it a lot. What's not to like is that you're using a older infotainment display or older infotainment system. It's kind of like the BMW iDrive 6 system. They're now up to eight, which means it's fine. Um, it's a bit laggy. You still get like a iDrive-y controller down here. It's almost the same, not quite as ergonomic as before, but it's a fine system. You do get wireless Apple CarPlay though, though no wireless Android Auto. So if you have an Android phone, you're not bougie enough to have a mini. Sorry. You've also got a storage area here. It's not really a storage area, actually. It's just your wireless charger, which would be great. But if you have any sort of flagship phone, like for me, I've got the iPhone Max 13, whatever. If I try and put it in there, just no chance in hell. It's an older system. They had it in like the BMW X2. In fact, they still have it in the BMW X2. Uh, I mean, at least you get a wireless charger, but you gotta have a pretty small phone to get it in there. And then you've got no storage, though it does lift up. You've got storage space there. Couple of cup holders. Look, I've got my obligatory water bottle. Fits a couple of cup holders in there, absolutely fine. You've got a storage area up front for your phone, a USB-C port, a USB-A port, and look, a little 12 volt socket. So you know, plenty of IO as they call it. Let's put that down there and There you go. Then here we have a glove box, which is a pretty decent size. I like that a lot. The door bins are tiny, really, really small. You're not getting a water bottle in there. Now, as I said, this is the mini yours trim, which means that it's premium. And you do get these awesome seats here. They call them lounge seats. I've got the Union Jack in the headrest. They look really cool and they feel super duper comfy. Again, really premium. Would be a lot more premium than the seats that you get, for example, in a base model Tesla Model 3. So I guess that's a good thing. You've also got a Harman Kardon sound system, which does sound <laughs> Very good. Up in front of you, you get a digital instrument cluster. Uh, it's pretty average. And also it's on an angle in every single mini and it does my head in. It's like slightly tilted to the left, which is a bit annoying for someone like me who notices those kinds of things. But it does have a pretty cool layout, EV specific, of course. Up front, you get a heads up display, which is really annoying because if you have the steering wheel in the wrong position, for example, I usually like to have my steering wheels a bit higher and all of a sudden, I can't actually see the heads up display. So that kind of sucks. Speaking of steering wheel, it is a very nice steering wheel. It's uh, one of the, I guess, older style BMW steering wheels, but nothing wrong with that. It feels super nice to hold on to on the hands. You do have buttons to control a lot of things, but they feel plasticky and pretty horrible, to be totally honest with you. Uh, and also everything in here is a circle. And I mean everything from the air vents to the door handles, to the speaker housing, to this, infotainment display, which I didn't mention actually has lighting and uh, it's dynamic lighting. So for example, if I change the temperature, it like moves around. It's kind of cool. I don't know. Oh, 
It's a lot of beeps and, oh. Anyway, what's it like in the back seats? Let's go, let's go talk about that. Now, even though this is a sleek two door, you do get back seats. So to get into them, you reach around, you grab that, slide the seat forward. Just did leg day and I'm in a lot of pain. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ah! It's not, it's not, it's not the difficulty of getting in the back. It's just my legs being poop. So once you're back here, these seats are super duper comfy. We can slide this back. God, damn it, Jacob, why do you have your seat so far back? Can you just pull the seat forward? <laughs> so if the person in the front seat makes compromises, then you can have people sit in the back, although it's, you know, you will have to make compromises, but it is very, very comfy back here. I'll give you that. You get two seats back here, which is kind of enough. No, no, in all seriousness, it's actually pretty damn good back here. I, I wouldn't mind sitting back here, but the front person might mind because their legs are gonna be on the dash. So it is what it is, fam. Let's talk about practicality. Now, the Mini is not just Mini in name, it is Mini in size. Thankfully, the EV doesn't actually lose any internal space because the battery is so small. So maybe that's a, a win there, I guess. But yeah, it doesn't have much space regardless. So you might be able to fit a full suitcase in there and that's about it. You do get underfloor storage and that's where your charging cables live. This one is your like home emergency trickle charger. The other one here is when you're out and about and you have access to faster charging options. Yeah, it's not a huge amount of space, but you can put down the back seats using these fun little plugs here if I'm, if I'm tugging, if I'm yanking on your chain. And then yeah, you get plenty of space if you do that. So while we were just filming the B-roll then, I just saw this really cool feature. So yes, if you put it like that, the seats are all the way back, you're not gonna fit a full suitcase in there. I don't think, it'd be a real struggle. But you can lift up this tab here, pull it back, it means the back seat people aren't gonna be having a great time, but it means you get quite a lot more room in the back. So that's pretty cool. Spec time. Now, of course, this doesn't have an engine, but we'll still pop the hood anyway. Under here is a fake cover as we showed earlier, but doesn't really matter. It does have a pretty awesome setup. It actually comes from the BMW i3, the old, outdated, but amazingly weird BMW that I never have driven, but I wish I had. I so, you've driven it? Yeah. Where? I test drove once. Really? Yeah. Oh, how yeah, was it? Awesome. Yeah, really cool. Everything was very sustainable. <laughs> very sustainable. <laughs> So it's powered by a 32.6 kilowatt hour battery. That's about half of the size that you'll find in most other EVs now, at least full EVs. So 135 kilowatt of power, 270 newton meters of torque. That's actually quite a lot. Of course, this thing does weigh a little bit more than a standard Mini because of the batteries and whatnot. So you get about the same performance as a Mini Cooper S, but that doesn't mean it's a slouch. It's actually quite quick especially when you consider things like instant torque, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, charging is a pretty average story. I guess it's kind of similar to pretty much every other EV on the market, at least offered from BMW at the moment. So you have an AC charge current at max 11 kilowatt. If you use DC charging, it's 50 kilowatt. Although in Australia, it's so hard to find a DC charger. As I said, there is none around my house. This is the fastest I can find. So we're doing 11 kilowatt hour charging. We came here at 60% battery and now, it's been no joke about an hour what are we at we're at 70 percent so yeah it's not the quickest out there if you're going to be charging this you're going to be charging this at home and if you do so you can use a it comes with a like an emergency charger that you can plug into your home but really bmw sorry mini wants you to install a wall box in your home to plug it up and charge it up. Okay, so now we're gonna launch the Mini Cooper SE. It's not entirely fair because we're both sitting in the car, but Mini do claim that this will do 0 to 100 in about 7.1 seconds. But what will it actually do? We're actually in a slight decline here. So that should kind of balance out the fact that we're both pork chops. What's your guess? I guess that's a good question. I think, I think we'll do it in 7.4 seconds. I think 7.98. Ooh, oddly specific. All right, let's go. Okay, foot on the brake. No, well, I don't even know why. Let's go. Oh yeah. Instant talk, baby. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's oh. better. Yeah. I just took, that took me a second. <laughs> zero to 100 in 7.04 seconds. I'll take that, man. That's pretty good. Sick. Slight decline, but heavy boys. All right, let's get into how this thing drives when you're not being an idiot. By the way, bro, that's a nice hoodie you're wearing. Thanks, man. I actually got it from a really cool store called Matt Brand Cars. 
We don't even Store. know the, We don't know the name of the website. <laughs> what's, the, what's the website? I'll put it up here now. All right. So here we are driving the, I was about to say BMW, the Mini. God, God, I'm so tired, bro. Freudian uh, slip, all right? It happens to the best of us. Happens to the best of us. The Mini Cooper SE. S for S, <laughs> E for electric. <laughs> I've got the windows down, by the way, because I'm too scared to do it on the aircon because we're in the country and I don't know if we'll make it home. But let's give this thing some sauce. Oh, sprightly. It's decent, but it slows down once it gets to about 100. So this thing is electronically limited to 150 kilometers an hour. Not that you'll like, ever be going 150 kilometers an hour in this thing, unless you're on the Autobahn, but you'll run out of range pretty damn quick if you do that. Maybe it's too loud. Okay, I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. So actually my range just dropped four kilometers. So I guess that's all right. We just drove out here. Like for the car was at 90%, we're now at 75%. We've been driving for maybe 20 minutes. And I've been driving in green mode. I put the car in green to make the car more efficient. And so no joke, this car has just given me a lot of range anxiety mm. that I haven't experienced in other EVs because I've got 450, 60 kilometers of range. Like this is always ever present in my mind. Like, will I make it home? Can you tell? by the way the review's going. Yeah. <laughs> but let's talk about how it drives otherwise. So when you're just cruising along the highway, you have fixed dampers, which means that they're not adaptive, but it's actually pretty damn comfortable. Definitely on the sporty side, Yeah. Um, but it's good. The steering itself is pretty heavy, no matter what mode you're in. When you put it into sport mode, that means it does add quite a lot of weight to the steering wheel, but in a good way. And I'll show you what I mean when we get to Saucy Corner. This is actually the original Saucy Corner. You haven't seen it yet. No. We go to the Saucy Corner too, Popping usually. The saucy Cherry. <laughs> Popping the Saucy Cherry. No joke, I, I'm filming back in the old location, which I don't like as much because there's you know, more traffic, but that's because it, this wouldn't make it. No joke to where we were filming, where we usually film. It'd make it one way. It'd make it one way, it wouldn't make it back. So that kind of sucks. But anyway, I'm, I'm going on about the range, but that's because that's kind of the biggest drawback of this car. Yeah. In terms of power though, you put your foot down, it goes, it really does go. It's a very quick car. So let's put the car into, there's three modes, sport, mid and green. There's also a green plus, which turns off aircon, which is pretty funny. Let's put the car into sport mode, literally has a go-kart for its icon. And the range dropped. <laughs> it did just drop, it just knows, it preempts. Yeah. It's just so surreal oh, yeah. that we're going quite quick yeah. and all you can hear is the chair kind of creaking. Yeah, I know. <laughs> which is a good thing actually, because it's very quiet within here. You can thank the fact that this does kind of have like luxury car underpinnings. And you've also got nice soft materials everywhere that helps to soak up a lot of the road noise. And when you put it into sport mode, the accelerator just goes like one-to-one, -one, meaning like you put your foot down a little bit and like it just goes. This thing handles pretty amazingly well. You'll see a lot of reviewers not actually taking this thing on the twisties because they, they can't make it out there. And really that's not what this car is for. But let me tell you, it's pretty fun on the twisties. Oh, wow. It's very flat as well. And you can thank the battery for that because it's in the floor. So, you know, this car's center of gravity is really low, lower than any other Mini. But let me slow down here to give a bit of space between me and the car in front. And there's a few twisties here, so. It's pretty amazing the wheels don't scrabble. I'm not sure if there's a diff, like a limited slip diff between them, but I wouldn't be surprised because it puts down power really well. Like it's genuinely very impressive how this thing drives. And we did the M240i recently and that was amazing. But this, the fact that this still feels good compared to that. Yeah, that's know? true. Yeah, we literally just came out of that. Yeah. Swapped it over. Hats off, Mini. BMW. No, that's not fair. I'm sure they have like mini specific, but you know. They, they had a meeting about it. They had a, they, you know, they had, they had a corporate meeting about it. We know that much. A Zoom chat. Yeah. Oh, this is Saucy Corner. We're coming up to Saucy oh Corner, friend. It's All right. time. So, we got to come to a stop. This Saucy Corner isn't quite as good as last Saucy, Saucy, Saucy Corner, but it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a corner of sauce. All right, you ready? All right. Here we go. This is the first corner. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. oh. The, I Ooh. felt the back come around yeah, there. Yeah, a little bit. A bit of under and over. Yeah, it was a bit of under and over steer. That oh. was quite weird. Look, this thing is actually quite a lot oh, of fun wow. to drive. It's actually... It's holding that 
that line really well. That's impressive. Wow. That is impressive. Okay. All right. All right. I, I think I get it. I think I get this car. Can it's I... like, when are you going to be out here though? Yeah, well, you're not. Because you're going to be scared to get home. Uh, it's really good though. I think, I think I've figured this car out though. To me, this car is the perfect city car. It's the, it's the car you have when you're in like Paris, right? It's when you want to go to point A, point B shops in style, in comfort. It is quite comfortable. It's just that range. It really, it really ruins it for me. You know, like 180 kilometers on a good day. I don't know, man. I've been driving this car pretty civil and in green mode most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now, though. Not right now, though. And you know, like it's, I don't know. Handling is very good, though. It does, it does, I know it's so cliche. It's disgustingly cliche, but it does handle like it's on rails. People call it a hot hatch. And again, I want to reiterate that that is ridiculous. It doesn't have the emotion of a hot hatch. I don't feel like I'm, you know, like this. Fighting with the car. Yeah, or like doing much. It's almost like on easy mode because it handles so well, thanks to the battery being low. Um, the regen braking is what's stopping me there. I, I have not put my foot on the brake once because the regen is, is really good. I don't know, man. I'm in two minds. I'm in two minds. This car is, is good, very, very good. Drives amazingly well, but you don't get to drive it for very long. And there's a lot of anxiety with it. I'm now down to 98 kilometers. Like that, probably oh, two kilometers there and back is just because of the way we were driving. It's used about 15 k's of range. Yeah, that's not awesome. And now this chair creaking is starting to annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into my final thoughts. All right, so what are my final thoughts on the Mini Cooper SC? I think early on in my career, I made the mistake of being like, I don't like it because it's got these flaws, therefore no one will like it. There is definitely a market for this car. It is just for people who are doing, you know, short trips. You can't go, for example, an hour out of Melbourne, you won't make it home. I'm not even joking. You, like there's like, there'll be nowhere to charge. You, you're not gonna make it home. So this is the kind of car that if you live in a small area and you wanna go EV, you want a really good looking car uh, and you're happy to spend the money, it's kind of perfect for that. But for me, I would just go out and buy myself a Tesla Model 3, personally. That's just me. But let me know what you guys think of the Mini Cooper SE. Would you buy one? Would you spend the 70 grand to get yourself the Mini Cooper SE Mini yours uh, multi-tone roof, as this one is called? Let me know in the comment section just below that like button. Thank you guys very much for watching. And as always, I don't know why I did that. I'll see you next week. Ciao for now.